Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Cathexis. Investment of mental or emotional energy in a person, object, or idea. Cathexis. And I thought that was something, as soon as I read it, something that had to do with Catholicism. With that C-A-T-H at the beginning. But it doesn't. Um, But in a similar way, speaking of Catholicism, the, the first thing that it made me think about with mental and emotional energy is dealing with family. Um... And family and church kind of go hand in hand. Uh, They're both very familial. But my family uh, was Catholic uh, uh, growing up and my extended family and everything. So uh, it sort of fits. I don't know. Anyway, so I think family and mental and emotional energy can go from the highest high to the lowest low. Uh, we just had my father's birthday a few days ago. My mom was having heart issues. My brother was having relationship issues, which are also kind of heart issues. Um, anyway, everyone was on on edge, and it was extremely stressful. We try to laugh to make people relax, and we were told that we were insensitive. Uh, we asked uh, what we could do to help each other, and we were told that we wouldn't give up. And if it wasn't family, that I would have left in a second. But the blood or bond, whatever, whatever, whatever reason you're there, it just keeps pulling you back. So how to get that into a game? Um, the one thought is a large, large scale game. And by that I mean like 10 or more players where groups of three or more are playing as a family unit. Fa- family unit. Uh, no matter what one person in the group says, they have to stick together. They can't, you know, they can bicker back and forth and decide whatever but they have to make a decision and they have to stick with with their family members um there could always be an alpha player in that group and you know meaning the player that calls all the shots but that's kind of like real life so you work together figure it out um but you have to you, you can't abandon them uh and if you do there are serious downsides So something that could make it all escalate properly because there needs to be something driving this and there needs to be some conflict and tension. And the thing that I thought of was real time or a time limit. Um, The other thing I made a note was that it's all pretty close to home so people may not like it being an escape with playing board games. But it's just trying to make this word work. Another way to do it is via co-op, which is similar to team-based gaming except there's only one team. Um, you're usually playing against the game itself. So that's how far I got. But then I want to think about how to gamify emotional or mental, mental energy. And both of these things wipe you out. Uh, I made a note that we have it here with my daughter and how she drains you by the end of every weekend. So in in gamifying that, that drain, um, I said let's say it's a co-op card game. Uh, you have a five-card hand. And throughout the game, things are going to get stressful. And when they get stressful, you have a choice. You can either reduce your hand size uh, down by one. So let's say instead of five, you're down to four. Uh, Due to the stress, you go down one. Or you can skip a turn, not do anything, and, and refresh, which is going to get you back up by one. So this hand size is, is, your, is your resources that are just getting drained as things get stressful. And if you're down one and things get stressful again, you can bow out, lose, uh, you know, to, to, to pass and gain back up. Or you can lose a card again, which you keep going down and down and down. And the less cards you have, the less choices you can make, the less options you have, and the more that your, your energy is, is strained. Um, the time limit could be a factor in that because the time limit is really going to uh, make things stressful, make you make choices, quick choices. If you have less cards, it's easier to make a quick choice, but you're limited. Um, and then I just had quickly on the other side of that, if you invest enough of your energy into the thing, whatever it is, if it's a family member, if it's a child, if it's whatever, it eventually should turn around and help you. If it's a kid, it's like 20 years later. So 
it's it's way late but if it's something with a faster you know cycle like raising a pet or building a house or something like that you eventually get some sort of rewards out of the, you know after the emotional energy that you put into it so that's about as far as i got today i didn't i didn't go too deep i kind of got stuck on this family thing but i did push it out to the team the uh everybody on board game geek on the forums there i asked them what their thoughts are for the word and I have two people that are following this thread and very dedicated daily to posting their, their thoughts. And the first one is Caroline Berg. Cathexis. Uh, I feel like I'm not saying that right, but Cathexis. Royal Descendant is the name of the game. Uh, you tell people all the time that you are a descendant of kings, but they are calling on you to prove it. Build a family tree that has more nobility than peasant stock. Peasant stock. Use cards to remove family members or the family from your tree or others to make your descendants more royal and your opponents less royal. The first person to fill three generations of their family tree triggers the end of the game and the person with the most royal blood relations wins. Which is interesting because I also went with that, that family approach because it drives that emotional and mental energy. So the second one and the final one for today is uh, Adrian Pillai who uh, said a non-cooperative vote placement game where each player has a cast of characters that they want to survive and a bunch of action and item cards. The theme is you're all trapped in a haunted mansion looking for a way out if you can survive that long. Phase one, players vote by investing their token on an idea or an action that they want to take exploring the mansion. Phase two, players then vote on an object uh, the person exploring will take with them, a weapon, a flashlight, nothing at all, etc., Phase three, you all vote for the poor sap who will perform the set idea with said object. Phase four, the game plays its event cards. Players then can vote to proceed uh, to draw more event cards. And each event that they get through brings them closer and closer to winning the game. Each character they lose also loses the items they carried, run out of any type of card, and the game is over. You win if you have the most characters survive. And that's really cool. I think there's some, especially the uh, any type of card running out, you lose. That's neat. So there, it's two completely different ideas. A little bit of family like mine, but uh, Haunted Mansion and Survival, which is, which is very different with a lot of voting in there. Uh, but that voting, that, that interactivity is, is sort of the, the heart of Cathexis. is just the investment. And I think that's it for now. That's another episode of Design Diary. We'll be back tomorrow again. Feel free to join us and chime in with any of your thoughts and ideas because it's always great to hear them. All right, see you next time.